Chris Masterjohn here. I'm going to give you a few minutes of practical instruction about how you can determine whether you have a genetic predisposition to greater sensitivity to blue light. And what that means on a practical level is that you can use this information to help you predict uh, if you have any problems related to this sleep or circadian rhythm. So for example, if you have trouble falling asleep, trouble staying asleep, trouble getting enough sleep, trouble getting to sleep at regular times, or if you sleep enough but you don't feel rested when you wake up and you don't feel alert during the day. Any of these problems, uh, it would be very useful for you to check your genetics uh, for this particular gene I'm going to be talking about today and to see what your genotype is. That can really help you uh, narrow down what is and isn't likely to be the best solution to those problems. All right, so uh, in order to, th there are a couple things that you want out. First of all, in order to do this, you have to have a 23andMe account. If you don't have a 23andMe account, that involves uh, paying the fee and it involves sending in a saliva sample and having over half a million genetic polymorphisms tested. So you need to make a decision whether that's consistent with your value system. Maybe your desire for the privacy of your genome outweighs your desire for practical, actionable insights about um, your genome. And if that's the case, then, then you shouldn't do this. Uh, in my case, my desire for actionable insights about my genetics is greater than any theoretical or hypothetical concerns I have about the privacy of my genome, so I have chosen on that value system to get 23andMe. All right, so if you have 23andMe, uh, and, or if you're going to get 23andMe, this is how you use it to determine how sensitive you are to light uh, on a genetic level and, help, and how to help you decide whether being more strict and consistent about controlling your light exposure is likely to fix any problems you have related to your sleep or circadian rhythm. So the first thing you're going to want open is the uh, show notes for episode 10 of the Daily Lipid Podcast. Right now, they're, uh, right now it's at the top of my blog because I just put it out. Maybe you're listening to this a year down the line and uh, you want to be able to find these show notes. You go over here where it says the Daily Lipid Cloud Podcast, uh, assuming my website still looks like this in a year, which hopefully it won't, and uh, you go to all episodes click on that, and that gives you just the podcast show notes in reverse chronological order. Ten's on top right now, but let's say we're, it was at episode 100. You just uh, scroll down to the bottom uh, and find episode 10. I wish this were the dailylipid.com slash 10. Uh, it's not. So this is the best I can do with the system I have right now to make it easy to find the show notes. So you click on the show notes, and what you'll see here first is if you want all the details uh, in the nitty-gritty about this gene, its interaction with vitamin A and other nutritional factors and so on and the research studies, you can listen to the podcast through your preferred mechanism. You can also find it in your favorite podcast app. Uh, or you can go down to where it says show notes for episode 10. It says there's a corresponding blog post. If you click on that, uh, that brings you to the Weston A. Price site where I have basically the same core of information but in blog post form. So however you prefer to consume your media, um, you know, pick one or the other and that'll give you most of the details. Uh, maybe you don't want most of the details and you just want the practical tips. That's where this video comes in. Okay, so if you have one or both of those open, the other thing you want open is your 23andMe account. If you go to your 23andMe account and uh, you go to the main screen, there is no health or trait report about this to my knowledge, but the hack to work around that is super easy. So you go in the upper right corner where it says your name, you click on the drop down menu and go to browse raw data. Once you're there, you see two text box boxes. One says jump to a gene, the other says jump to an SNP. You're gonna use jump to an SNP, but first you have to get, you have to get the RS number of the SNP. So if you go to the show notes for the episode and you go to this first list of bullet points that gives you written instructions of how to do that, double click on the RS number 
uh, Command C on the Mac or Control C on the PC to copy it. Then go to the Browse Raw Data tab, click your cursor in the SNP box, and on the Mac, Command V, on the PC, Control V to paste it, and then click on Go. And that'll give you the gene for OPN4, which is the melanopsin gene that we're concerned with. And then it'll give you your genotype on the right here. If you were ac accessing this from the blog post, you could click on Practical Rec Recommendations under the 23andMe heading. You can also double click on the RS number there and do the exact same thing. Uh, so either the blog show notes or the blog post doesn't matter. They both get you the same place. All right, so once you have your, your genotype for the OPN4 gene or melanopsin gene, you can look over on the right under your name and you can see whether it says CC, which means you're homozygous for the C allele, CT, like I am, that would make you heterozygous, or TT, which makes you homozygous for the T allele. Across the global population, the majority of people have TT. That means that you're in the minority if you have even one C allele. In the European ancestry populations within the United States, about 34% have one or more C alleles. And so that puts me in the top third of light sensitivity for my, uh, for my heritage. That number drops if you're looking at Asian populations or African populations. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't have every single population, but from the samples that I've, saw, I've seen, um, and of course, it's lower if you have two C alleles than if you are heterozygous for one C allele like I am. If you have two C alleles and you're Japanese, that puts you in the top 2% of light sensitivity in the Japanese population. Uh, anyway, point being, if you have even one C allele, you're in the minority. And you're in the minority that is more sensitive to light than the majority is. And that means if you have any trouble relating to sleep or circadian rhythm and you have the C allele, then that increases the probability that focusing in on optimizing your light exposure routine is likely to have the biggest payoff, the biggest bang for the buck. Right? So there are a lot of things that you could do to get better sleep if you know what's most likely to help and you focus on that thing that gives you a lot of useful, actionable information. So if you know what I'm talking about when I say a light routine, go forth and get off the fence and do your light routine. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I would suggest reading my blog post or uh, listening to the podcast. In the blog post after the 23andMe section, there's a section that says what to do with this information. That's where I talk about the practical things you can do. In the podcast, um, you listen in through towards... Uh, towards the end, it, the more the closer you get to the end, the more uh, practical information that you have. Um, and if you do that, uh, and actually uh, come to think of it, I should put an index in the show notes of where different types of information starts to make it easier to get around in. By the time you watch that video, uh, that index will probably be there. So use that index and skip to the section that you want in the podcast to learn about how to make a light optimization routine. Um, the, you know, the key parts of this are get outdoor sunlight as soon as possible in the morning and spend two to four hours at a consistent time every night before you go to bed in blue light deprivation mode. Um, if you want to know more about my own routine, you can go to episode five of the Daily Lipid Podcast where I share my routine. Um, and in the podcast here, I also uh, branch out towards the end in terms of what if this isn't working? What do you do then? And I talk about some, you know, the psychological and temperature related factors that you need to take into account. And I also talk and in, take into account, say you optimize your routine and it still doesn't work. What are some nutritional factors that could be at play? What is the low hanging nutritional fruit? What is the low hanging uh, test you can run to, to uh, low hanging fruit in terms of tests you can run to, to really narrow in on what's most likely to be um, the weakest link in the chain for you to fix, and so on. If you do this and you're comfortable sharing your genotype, please go to the comments for the show notes. There aren't any yet because I just released this a few minutes ago. Please go there and post a comment and let me know, hey, I have the TT genotype, I have the CC, I have the CT, and this is my story with 
how the light-based routine did or didn't work for me. Um, that helps me appreciate uh, to what degree is this practically useful to other people, but also it can give us some data. So that can allow us to kind of crowdsource uh, some initial inquiry into how well does the genotype correlate with the need for an efficacy of a light optimization strategy for your, mor your morning and evening routines. And uh, that can help us, even though it's informal data collection, it can help us at least um, start to move away from anecdotal and into the realm of having some quantitative data on just to what degree is the genotype um, relevant as a predictor. And hopefully we will also see some research studies in the future that look at that. Hey, maybe I'll look at that uh, in the coming academic year. We'll see. All right, so that is the end of this short video. I hope it's practically useful for you. Um, until next time, I hope you sleep well tonight.